Hey everyone and welcome back. So in this video we're going to implement our character movement. Before that there's just a couple of very simple things I want to do so I'm going to quickly create two folders, a blueprints folder and a maps folder. We're just going to get all of the project tidy stuff out of the way now as well because it'll take a few seconds. So in the map I'm currently in, uh, this is currently called untitled, it's just a default map. I'm going to save this into the maps folder and I'll call this one main. So that would just be our main map for this project. We're going to go over to the project settings. We can do all of this in one go uh, under the maps and modes. We can leave the game mode for now. We're going to have to change this uh, very shortly. But before that, we just want to set the entry map to be main for the editor and the game default map. So that means that now whenever we restart the project or build this out, the uh, map that will load by default will be our main map. And we're going to start adding the gameplay in here. So the other thing you probably noticed is I've moved away from the input tab. So back in the project settings, if we go to input again, uh, I have a bunch of axis mappings and an action mapping. So these are the ones that you're going to want to copy. I'll leave these on screen, pause the video here, um, add one action mapping called jump and assign them the buttons that you want. And you can add several axis mappings. Uh, we've got a move forward, move right, turn right, turn, look up right and look up and again, assign the buttons that you want. Now, the important thing here is that you have to remember how you name them. So if you're gonna copy exactly, just make sure that you are case sensitive because it's the names of these mappings that we will be using and referencing in C++. And if you name them incorrectly, then your character won't be moving. Another thing to mention is that I've taken these from the third person template pack. So if you wanted to get these without adding them yourself, I basically just created the third person template on the Epic Launcher went into the project, I exported the uh, the button config, so you can say export, select where you want them to export to, and then import them into another project, and you can import from that file all of the mappings. So generally something I do because I hate adding these myself, uh, and it saves a little bit of time. Okay, so if those things done, we can move back over to our C++ class. So if you don't already have it open, go back to the C++ classes folder, we're gonna go down to the characters folder and the YouTube character base. Now I'll say this for all of the classes and things that we make as we go through this playlist. I will try and give as much information as possible, especially when I think it's super relevant or it can be easily misunderstood or something, but I'm not gonna be approaching this from a uh, learning how to program on your very first day type of thing, just because there's so much documentation already available for C++ and the Unreal specific boilerplate C++ as well. And I would be into like 30, 40 minute videos if I were to explain all of the things in depth as we add them into a C++ class. If there's anything that I mentioned that I don't cover and you still don't understand, for example, we're going to leave out things like what virtual means. Uh, I've kind of touched on overrides, but if any of these don't make sense, all of this will be in the documentation. So just have a quick Google for these and you'll find what you need for really it's the terminologies that I don't want to go too in depth on. Okay, so to get the character set up, we're going to need a few different things in our header class. So make sure that you're in the header class, first of all. Uh, under the public section, so we have two public sections. This is a little bit annoying, but it kind of makes sense because when we go back over to the C++ class, the where you create the functions and things here, if you automatically generate them, which I'll show you how to do later, then it will put them below the one that they are above or below in the header file. So just for tidiness um, in the code file, I'm going to leave the public protected and then another public section. And that basically means anything under this will be a public variable or a function, uh, which means other classes can access it. Uh, anything under this will be protected, which means only child classes of this class can access it. And we've got another option. Of course, anything under here will be public as well. Uh, and we have a third option, which is private. Uh, now, if you, anything you put under a private section will be uh, only things in this class can access it. Okay, so again, very brief <laughs> cover there, but what we want to do is go back to our first public section and we're going to add our component. So the first thing we want is a spring arm component, which we're going to attach our camera to. Remember, when we're adding these in, we're going to be putting a, an asterisk at the end of the component type. So this is a type that exists in the engine. The U means that it is an Unreal specific property or component and anything with the U before it will be automatically accounted for and collected in the garbage collection so we won't get anything like uh, memory leaks. So this is creating a U spring arm component and then we want to give it a name, so the name of the variable. I'm just going to call this one spring arm comp. 
Now this is going to have a red line because we don't actually, this class doesn't know what a uSpringArm component is yet and we're going to fix that in a moment. Uh, but first of all, we're just then going to go back above this and create the U property. Okay, so U properties are going to be the, again, this is uh, Unreal specific C++ boilerplate. This will give it the properties uh, which will allow it to be exposed in things like blueprints. Uh, we can do things like setting it to be only visible in blueprints, things like that. And the ones that we want for our spring arm to make it very easy to edit and update. We want to make it visible anywhere. We want to make it blueprint read only, so we can't change the type in blueprints, but um, we it will allow us to see it. And then finally, we're going to give this a category name, just so that it nests things in a nice tidy way in the editor. And in this instance, I've just called mine uh, category camera. Now, there are different ways that you can do this, uh, just to highlight that you may see this in different ways. You can do it without the double quotes. And I think you normally see it like this, so it'll be category equals and then immediately after the category name. Um, I just kind of like the look of having the quotes and that little bit of separation. Okay, so the final thing is we want to get rid of our red squiggly. So the reason we have this is that the class at the moment doesn't know what the spring arm component is. It doesn't exist in its in the libraries that it references because we're using this new thing which is the core minimal which is an update which is made uh, probably four or five versions ago now and it just means that we only include what the class absolutely needs to begin with it cuts down compile times it means it doesn't have as many references to different classes to worry about but it does mean we now have to manually add the things that we want to use now there are two ways to do this we can use the hash include so we'll use um or pound include and then the library in which you find the component. Now, if you do it this way, this is the slightly heavier way to include things. It will have all of the references to that entire class on the assumption that you want to do things like calling functions or references within that class. Now, the slightly lighter way and the way that you normally do this in the header file, this doesn't tend to be used as much in the code files, is you can just put the word class in front of the component. So we can say class uSpringArm component. Now, when the compiler reads from top to bottom, it will see the class and obviously left to right. It will see the word class first and it will know that we need to make a quick reference to what the spring arm component class is and get the information about that. Now when you're declaring something that is the very minimum that you need and that will work for header files. Now another way to do this and the way that I like doing it just um, in case we ever need to add a second component or something because this will only be valid for the the component or the asset directly to the right of the word class uh, is we can put this underneath the includes and then just close it off with a semicolon and now that means for this header file we can add as many use spring arm components as we need and it will always have at least the base understanding of what that component is so again these explanations i've made a little bit more in depth than i will going forward because we're going to be doing very similar things for the other components but um the logic behind them the the whys and the hows we're doing them are all going to be the same so that is our spring arm component now added to our header class the next thing we want to add is the camera to attach to the spring arm component. So we're going to want to do the same thing again. We want our class and then we want the U camera component. And we're also going to add a static mesh. So we may as well get that out of the way whilst we're up here. So we'll say class U static mesh component. And there we go. They are the three uh, references to other classes we need to continue. So if we add a U camera component, first of all, and then we can add our U property. And in fact, this is exactly the same as this one. So we can just copy and paste and then we want the static mesh which will be the mesh for the character and i'm just going to use a cube for this so we don't need to worry about things like animations uh, but you could obviously make it a skeletal mesh if you wanted um, and in fact because we're using a character class it will have an inherited skeletal mesh in the character class and that's another thing if you ever want to look at what's happening here we can go to the definition of the header for the character class and you can always reference how they're adding in their u properties the skeletal mesh components and things like that so you can get an idea of how it's all been done in the engine code as well as the classes that we're making so this is a really good way to actually get um, more of a, an, a working understanding of how the classes are set up behind the scenes uh, and of course how to set yours up based on this so definitely if you get some time and you just want to learn a bit more have a read through the base classes I'd probably start with the pawn class rather than the character class is a bit heavy but um, this would be a good way to learn how they include things, how they set the U properties up, how they create functions and things like that. So uh, we want to add an additional static mesh because we won't be using skeletal. So we're going to say the U static mesh and we'll call it mesh comp. And again, I'm just gonna copy in the U property that we had. I'm just gonna change the name of the category from camera to player. And they are the components ready to go. 
Okay, so in the protected section now, so the things which are only going to be relevant to this class and classes which inherit from it, so which are made children, child classes, will be the movement. And we want a function for all of the inputs that we've provided. So this is quite simple. To create a function, we say void. So it's not returning any value. So it's not returning a float or a boolean or anything like that. We want one for move forward. So we'll call the function move forward. We're going to need to pass in the value, the amount in which we want to move. And that's going to be based on the input. So we'll just set this as float value. And then again, we close that off with the semicolon. So that is how we declare a function. So I'm just going to do the same thing for the next ones. We're going to have a move right, turn at rate, look up at rate as well. Okay, so they're the functions that we'll be using in our code class when we implement the actual movement. Uh, the next thing is we can just add in our base properties as well. So this is just going to be a float for the base turn rate. If you still have the U property um, copied from previously, we can just paste this down because again, we want this to be visible anywhere. Uh, blueprint read only, so we can't change the type or anything. This is specific to the turn rate of the camera, so we can leave the category as camera as well. Um, and then we want a base lookup at rate. So one of these is going to be for the controller, by the way, and one is going to be for the mouse and keyboard. That's why we've got two similar things, but uh, they will be implemented slightly different in their functionality. And again, I'm just going to copy in the U property that we've had previously, uh, because that just seems to fit quite well here. Okay, so that is our header file ready to go. Something else to be aware of is that, again, if you don't have access to Visual Studios, I'm using the community version, so it's completely free. But if for some reason you have a restriction or a system which doesn't run this, then you will be missing out on a few features that I mentioned. Uh, one of which is that we can create a function quite simply by highlighting the name, pressing control and the period or the full stop button and hitting create definition of that function. Now this will automatically create this in the code file. If we click on this little uh, promote to document button here, that will take us over to the code file and that function is just created. Okay, so that is the way I will be creating these for these for this project uh, just because it's faster and this is already taking quite a while but i will run through a few examples here of how we can create these if you don't have that functionality so to create a new function uh, really it's quite simple the things that we need are going to be the name of the function and the parameters which we're passing in so the arguments of that function we don't want the semicolons we don't really want the void because uh, we can just type that in but if we copy the move right for example and then with that copied, we're going to go over to the C++ file. We're going to go be below the move forward function. Uh, like I said, we just we can quickly type void. Not copying that means that we don't need to worry about going forward and backwards here because the next thing we need is the AYT character base. So we're calling a function inside of this class. Then the double colons. And then we can just paste in the move right, go down and close these off with the brackets. So the open and close brackets. And there you have a function. So that's all this was. Uh, like I said, very simple to implement. I'll just show another couple of examples. So we have our turn rate. So again, we'll get everything before the semicolon, ignore the void, come back in, and then we'll say void, and then the AYT character base, double colon, paste in that, and then the open close brackets. Okay, so then we now have our turn at rate function ready to go. And then finally, I'm just going to do this. Uh, for those of you who do have the shortcut again, it's control, full stop or period, and then create definition. So I've just gone over twice how to do the shortcut version if you have that, and twice how to add them manually. And that's how we add a function into our code file. So looking at the recording now, uh, without editing, this is coming in at around 20 minutes, probably a bit too long to keep people's attentions. So I didn't really account for this, uh, but rather than doing everything in this one video for just movement, I think I'll start splitting these out into header implementation, code implementation, uh, and keep them again specific to their topic. Just hopefully so it's a bit easier for you guys to come in and out and start a video and get through the whole thing rather than just having one giant video to go through and remember where you were. So I'll end this video here for today. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.